my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. And this week we're going to work on something you guys have been waiting a while to see. And that is this piece behind me. We are going to pour this resin faux marble look um, stone top on this furniture piece this week. I decided to split this video into two parts. One for the furniture finish that we're going to finish together later. Um, and then this video here that we're going to use um, to go ahead and do this faux marble look on the top. So this piece started out with a really um, dated brown body on it. And then it had a stone top, but it was a really dated brown marble. It just wasn't attractive, but it was in really good shape. So I wanted to update it. And so I chose to go ahead and pour it using um, Amazing Resin from Alumalite. Um, we use Amazing Clearcast Plus, which has a UV resistance. It's gonna keep this white top from turning yellow over time. It's a beautiful product. It's actually a pretty easy look to do. It's just really messy. So I'm excited to walk through this with you guys. I was a little nervous of how it would turn out, but I'm thrilled with the outcome. Um, people walk by this and they wanna touch it all the time because it is super smooth like glass. And you really cannot tell that this is not a real sheet of marble. So I'm thrilled with the outcome and I hope you guys enjoy this video. You can find all the products I used in the description for this post. Um, and I hope you'll click the subscribe button if you enjoy this video. Here's where I started on this piece. You can see that ugly brown marble top. Um, I was able to get up underneath the cabinets and remove the top drawer to take this top off. And then I started by cleaning it really well with Dixie Belle White Lightning. Once my top was clean, I gave it a thorough scuff sanding using rad pads from Surf Prep. And then I'm going to go ahead and coat my top in two coats of Dixie Belle Slick Stick. This is going to give my surface some bite um, for my finishes to grab onto. It's also going to give me a white finish to cover up this dark stone. Here's where I was at the end of day one. Okay, I want to show you everything that I've got out to get prepared for my pour right now. So the most important thing is when you're working with resin, you always want to make sure you wear your personal protection equipment. So I've got gloves on, I've got my apron on. Um, there can be skin sensitivities to resin, so you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves when you're working with this. I'm choosing to use Amazing Clearcast Plus. I'm choosing Amazing Clearcast Plus because it has enhanced UV protection. And what that means is it's less likely to yellow over time. Because I'm using a white resin, I want to make sure that my resin itself is not going to yellow over time. So this is the perfect product for that. The other things I've got out, I've got out my um, cup that I'm going to measure my or mix my resin into. I've got out a silicone measuring cup. These are great to have because they clean really, really well. Um, I've got out some Dixie cups because I'm going to mix a few different colors so I can mix my colors into individual Dixie, Dixie cups. I have out resin dye. Now these are um, from Illumilite as well. These are opaque resin dye. So I'm going to dye my resin to white. But what I'm actually going to use to make my gray is I'm actually going to use a little bit of Dixie Belle paint. Now I want to point out one thing. Um, resin is very sensitive to water and Dixie Belle is a water-based paint. So when I mix this, I'm going to use very, very little paint. It is a drop of paint is all it takes to tint my resin. And that is because I want this color. This is the color that I'm going to want. Um, I have out Aluma Dust, which is a mica powder, a very fine mica powder. I got that out in black and white. Um, a pearl and a black pearl. And those I can add shimmer to my resin. Um, I've got out some silicone mixing tools, some things to move my resin around with. These are all made of silicone, and that is because silicone cleans remarkably well. Let me show you here. This is one I've used before, and I can just flex my silicone, and the resin comes right off. So these are extremely friendly to use because they clean really well. A few popsicle sticks because I can throw these away when, I done, when I'm done, and I'm going to get started mixing my resin. So let me move some of this out of the way. And my Amazing Clear Cast Plus comes in an A and a B portion. So I want to mix equal parts of my A and B portion. I'm going to use this cup here and I'm going to start with my A. Two, so I've got about 100 milliliters here. I'm going to top it off just a little bit to get right to that 100 mark. And then let it level out because I want to make sure that I get my A and my B portion mixed um, in the right quantities, making sure that they're equal. Just going to use my popsicle stick to clean out my silicone cup. Now, as long as I um, don't mix these together, nothing is going to happen. So I can leave this in this cup for as long as I need to. It's not till I add that second portion that they're going to start. The chemical reaction is going to start. Um, 
Resin is very weather sensitive. It's kind of cold here. It's in the evening. We're in winter in California. And so my resin's going to be a little thicker. And so weather's always something to consider. Environment is something to consider when you're pouring. So now I'm going to do the same with my B side. This one's slightly thinner, so it's a little easier to pour. Once these are mixed together in a cup, I do want to stir for about four minutes. And I'll show you how I do my um, stirring in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and use one of these guys when I'm stirring. And I'm going to go ahead and stir this for four minutes. Okay, when you're mixing your resin, I've mixed mine for about four minutes, you wanna make sure that you're kind of turning it. I'm, I'm pulling everything from the bottom up to the top to make sure that I've got my A and my B portion equally mixed. You don't wanna whip it too much because you will introduce a lot of bubbles in the stirring process and the less bubbles, the better when you're mixing. So now I've got my Dixie cup set out and I'm going to mix this into a few different colors. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit into each one of these Dixie cups. I'm going to point my cup into a spout and I'm just going to kind of estimate how much of each one I'll need. I think I want most of the gray, so I'm going to go ahead and pour that one pretty full. Okay, and then I'm going to have a little bit of my white with a pearl in it. I want a little bit of a black with a pearl in it. And then the majority that I have left is going to be um, white. I'm going to go ahead and pour some into a cup just for extra if I need it for whatever color if I run short on something. I'm going to keep my clear because I'm going to mix this cup into my white. So the first portion I'm going to mix is I'm going to take my Alumilite resin dye. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm just going to put I'm just going to put maybe one drop in there. Okay, it does not take a lot, so I'll mix it slowly. You can see the white mixing into the resin. Okay, that's still a little bit frosty white. It's still a little less opaque than I want. Let's see. So I can kind of guesstimate it by holding it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put another drop in there. Just one drop is all I'm doing at a time, and then I'll mix that second drop in. I'd rather mix it slowly than get too much in there. Let's go ahead and mix some of these other guys here. So I wanna go ahead and mix my paint. This is Dixie Belle paint in driftwood. I'm just gonna take a popsicle stick, take a little bit of my paint. Remember I told you a very little amount of paint, and I'm just gonna add that to my resin. Okay, and you can see that was barely any paint, just what was on my popsicle stick mixes to the gray that I want. Okay, the next color I'm gonna mix is a slightly darker gray. This is a hurricane gray. Just give me a little bit of variation in my veining. I want this to look like Carrera marble when I'm done. So that's a little bit more of a dark gray. Mix some of our pearl. I'm gonna use my Aluma dust. This is Aluma dust in pearl. This is going to give me a little bit of shimmer. And then I just take a little bit on the end of a popsicle stick and I'm gonna stir that right in. Again, it takes very little. A little bit goes a long way. That pearl is beautiful. Okay, and then next, last I'm gonna mix a little bit of black pearl. I want this to be very soft, so I'm just taking a tiny, tiny bit and very little resin. I'm not sure how much of this I will use. So I'm mixing it in a very, very small quantity. So what I end up with is I end up with a little bit of my light gray, which is Dixie Belle uh, Driftwood, a darker gray, which is Hurricane Gray, my um, Aluma Dust Pearl, and then my Aluma Dust Black Pearl. And then I've got a little bit of clear left over should I need it for anything. And of course my largest quantity is in my white. I've covered my area really well in cardboard because this is going to have a tendency to drip. It's going to make a mess. Um, I've removed the top off of my furniture piece. This is not always possible, but if it's not possible, then you can go ahead and wrap your furniture piece in plastic wrap. Um, this saves me from having to protect my furniture piece to just pull the top off if it's possible. Um, I've lightly sanded my top. 
a scuff sanding, and then I've coated it in Dixie Belle Slick Stick. I did this for a couple reasons. Number one, it's gonna give some bite for my new coating to grab onto. Number two, it's also going to give me a base of white so that I don't see through to the dark stone color. Okay, I'm using my silicone tools and I'm just helping the resin to spread. I ended up mixing about 700 milliliters of each, my A and my B side. And I'm gonna get it right close to the edge, but I don't wanna start flooding my edges yet. Um, I ended up mixing my white into two batches. One is more opaque than the other, and that's because I wanna get some of the variation that natural stone has in it. So I'm spreading right up to the edge. Um, amazing Resin and Amazing Clear Cast Plus have about a 30 to 40 minute working time. So once I've got my resin mixture going, I have about 30 to 40 minutes to go ahead and work my resin. 24 to 48 hours is my demold time. And that's what it should harden. So once I've got my white coated on here, the resin is going to start self-leveling because it's a liquid, it's going to want to self-level. I'm just going to get it right up to the edges because I'm going to wait a little bit before I start flooding my edges. Flooding means I'm going to let it spill over the top. I'm going to take my lighter gray that I mixed and I'm going to drizzle it. So I'm going to put my cup into a spout and I'm just going to drizzle it. This is going to be my veining. keep my veining going kind of in the same directions and I'm going to run my cup and let it spill right over the edge okay right up next to my light gray I'm going to go ahead and put some of my darker gray And same thing, I'm just going to drizzle that. You can kind of get an idea for how it's going to start looking. And I actually like this one vein that kind of goes a little bit horizontal, so I'm going to do a little bit of horizontal too. Go ahead and um, add in some of my pearl. And this will kind of go in the same directions that all my veins go in. But these will be veins of pearlescent in there. All right, and then I have my black pearl that I mixed very, very little of, so this is just gonna be a tiny bit. And that way those veins will end up being multicolored, which is a little more believable when I'm creating a fake stone look. Let's move this around. I'm gonna use my hair dryer.
I really like the movement that we've got going on here. So this is the point when I can decide anything that I want to add. I've got a little bit of that extra resin mix. And what I'm really liking that I didn't mix enough of is the pearl white. Um, and then I think I'm going to vein in an actual little bit of pure white. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit of those now. This is a little bit of a dark gray and I'm just going to darken up a little bit of my veining. Some of it turned a little more brown than I would like. I'm going to run this dark gray through those spots. Okay, and then I really liked the pearl, only I didn't mix very much of it, so I mixed a little bit more out of that excess white that I mixed, or the excess clear. That's why it's good to mix a little bit of excess. So this is um, the pearl white. Putting that right kind of where my veins run, so it kind of makes sense. That would be a natural like how it crystallizes in the middle of rock around where the veins are. It's a pure, pure white. More opaque than my background. Okay, so a couple tips on prepping your surface. You really wanna make sure this is level. So we did hold a level to it. I know my surface is level. I'm going to let this dry overnight. So I'm to the point now where I like my colors, my pattern. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a blow torch to torch out any air bubbles. Even though this looks super smooth and glassy, you'll see as I pop them that there are tiny air bubbles in it that you cannot see. So I've taken my gloves off so I can use my torch. So I actually made a little mistake and I know better than this, but I forgot to tape off the underside of my countertop. And so it's been about an hour and a half since I finished. I'm gonna come back with this popsicle stick and I'm gonna scrape my drips. Because if these dry on the underside of my countertop, I would have to come back and sand them off and it is not fun. So I'm just scraping them and lesson learned. Don't forget to tape off the bottom. I just use painter's tape and tape around all of the edges. And I'll make sure I do that before I do my flood coat next time. Still fresh enough to scrape, um, but dry enough that it's not still actively dripping is what, I'm, what I waited for. Okay, I've mixed my part A and my part B of my amazing ClearCast Plus resin into this cup. I'm making sure that I stir it really well. I wanna make sure that I'm lifting it and pulling it almost like a taffy and getting that part A and that part B mixed into each other really well. This is going to be for my final pour on this, which is just going to be a clear coat over the top. So I'm not mixing any color this time.
I chose to leave most of this video in real time so that you can hopefully get a feel for what it's actually like to do this. The only parts that are sped up are with my blow dryer and then my clear coat over the top, just the spreading portion. This portion just shows the surface around my area, the cardboard that I use to protect my flooring, and then to expect a certain amount of dripping. So once you use your gloved hand to guide the resin over the edges, it's naturally going to want to flood those, those edges. And so you do end, end up with some dripping underneath your surface. Overall, the waste is really minimal for the amount of resin that I used. I'm really happy with the outcome. I think the multi-colors of the gray and the black and the white together really gives this depth, and then using the hair dryer to overlap those colors makes it look really natural. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button. You can find more Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushedbybrandy.com.